But what I wanted to start with is, you know, this, this whole discussion around global turbulence, much more turbulence, and a, and a sense that prevails typically is that, and it, especially when it comes to MNCs, a sense that prevails is, look, the MNCs tend to apply a, a one broad brush stroke to their geographies, cut costs, freeze recruiting, freeze investment, and a kind of a segmented view, which is what is required in, in India is a different market than China is a different market than Europe. And that, that tends to somewhere, the sense that one gets is it's, getting, it's not getting that much of an attention. You would have been pretty much in the thick of all of this because as the global crisis hit in 2008, there would have been many policy directives that would have come from the global and you would have been in the center of making sure that they are not a broad brush but they are applied differently to the Indian markets. It would be very interesting to hear those times when kind of these discussions and decisions were happening in St. Gobain as to how did you manage to make sure that you know, we, we, we see India as an opportunity and the commitment to India remains where, where it needs to. I think the first and the most important uh, thing is St. Gobain fortunately has a fairly segmented view of the world. Uh, uh, even early on, it recognized that India is a growth country and mm -hmm. is seen as a country where Sangoban can have a profitable growth and a sustainable growth. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I would, I would say that in the early phase when you're making a very large mm -hmm. greenfield investment, the most important thing is performance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people and performance. Mm -hmm. So once you gain credibility on performance, once mm -hmm. you gain credibility on people and mm -hmm. then there is a reasonable amount of track record, mm -hmm. then it is possible for us to figure out how to do this mm. balance. Mm. You know, uh, when globally the company is mm. looking at uh, reducing capex mm. and improving its return on capital, mm. employee reducing costs mm. and mm. structure costs and other things. Correct. I think then, then you really work with the company and say, look, mm. here we have an opportunity to grow. Mm. So therefore, Sangoba actually bought this logic. Mm. And in 2009, mm. we probably were the one of the few countries in the mm. world, and mm. a, apart from some other countries Correct. like Brazil and other, yeah countries where the broad stroke of uh, cut, cut cost, cut capex was not really applied. Mm -hmm. There was obviously a slowdown mm -hmm. because uh, right. everywhere there would be a slowing down. And I think that is really the, and I think a CEO and the CXO's role right. is very, very crucial in, uh, in being able to project the country, mm -hmm. one through performance, and the second through really uh, people, and the third is really operational excellence. Correct. Now, Nothing, mm. nothing really holds the attention of uh, the you know the head office mm. when they find operationally Europe. you are at a good level. Mm. I think it's most important to get your operational parameters mm. right. Mm. You know whether it's your yields, your cost mm. levels, your various parameters. Correct. If you're really good, then you have a whole lot of middle management mm. which is supporting you. Mm. Mm. Remember that international companies don't take decisions based on just Correct. one view, yeah. there are a whole lot of people coming. There's an international uh, manufacturing director who will come, international marketing head will come, the finance head will come. When they see that, okay, this is solid, there are good solid people, yeah. operational performance yeah. are good, of course they'll yeah. go through some turbulence here and Correct. there. I think that's the key thing. So therefore, mm. I would really argue the, mm. the CEO and the CXOs mm. really should, must expose mm. the company mm. to the to the entire middle management mm -hmm. which helps the international mm -hmm. decision making. Mm -hmm. So you have so what we have done, I think, mm -hmm. is really get a lot of our middle management and senior management to directly connect with several other people internationally. Yeah. So you create a certain amount of uh, pull. Okay, you're good in uh, human resources management, you're reasonably good in operational excellence, you're pretty good in brand building, mm -hmm. you're reasonably mm -hmm. good in market segmentation and mm -hmm. other approach. Mm -hmm then you have a, people have a good view and, mm. and at the end of the day, it's not like one person takes mm. a decision on Correct. investments or anything mm. like that. I think that is why, and I think even in 2009, mm. when everywhere in, in the world, mm. there was a salary freeze mm. or something like that, India was one of the exception countries mm. Mm. where we were allowed to decide based on what we think is the most important. Obviously, yeah. there will be some slowdown and some of this. And I think we, we didn't stop investing in 2009 or 2010. And in fact, in last year, we we, uh, we acquired a company in India. And it was probably the single largest acquisition of Sangha Bank globally in that period. Okay. So you mentioned about you know, creating those connections. And that's an interesting one because 
know, as an MNC, you could you could basically have you know the CEO and the senior team get connected, but you also talked about finding ways of getting the middle management get connected to the headquarters and creating kind of therefore um, much more uh, you you are you are you are you are projecting the company and the performance not just at one level but Absolutely. across. And 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 see the, the for that I think the most important thing is super transparency. You know that companies go through tough times and bad times. Some of your operations are in, not doing very well. Some are doing very well. Some of the plants are not doing well. One of the things I would really argue is that if you really want international to support you, you've got to be completely transparent. You've got to let your people be able to say, you can't arch a straight, okay, talk about this, don't talk about that. So therefore, this thing, and ensure that entire information about this is completely integrated. So this helps. So for instance, every one of the visits of any middle or senior level, they have open access. They don't come and sit with me or sit with the top management only. And then they are selectively taken through a guided tour. Yeah. So they have, so what happens is that brings a solid credibility, not just to the senior management and the top management, but the middle management. At the end of the day, the executing part is the middle management. And people are confident that you have the solid uh, mid layer then people are willing to say, okay, if I have to make a choice between investing in, I'm just say, in Latin America or in uh, East Europe or in India or in China, I have these uh, data which is available, but where do I have greater comfort in executing? Because half is strategy and half is execution. And that is where I think the what I would call as a multiplicity of connection to the middle management helps. And, and you mentioned uh, you know, the, the two things at the beginning, it connects very strongly to that, the performance and the people. You are, through this mechanism, you are creating a mechanism by which performance is projected transparently across levels. Yeah. And you are also creating this mechanism by which people in the company are projected transparently. Absolutely. So they don't see that, look, the Indian operations is just these two guys, they see the absolutely, Indian operations. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I think uh, uh, we, we make presentation in the shop floor, yeah. we make presentations yeah. in customer's premises. We don't try to make this a boardroom affair, you know, yeah. where uh, seven or eight people get to see a very nice view of India. So I think that has helped and yeah. what it does is also on, we f fiercely compete for benchmarks within Group companies. Group companies. So, so there is a fierce uh, thing. If it is a, we won the first, uh, you know, world class excellence in uh, manufacturing, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we won the world class excellence in marketing. All of that, uh, I think th there's a certain amount of pride. And mm -hmm. once you're there, you mm -hmm. bubble up, Absolutely. and then people do that. And the second thing is that we really, really uh, send our people, you know, externally, mm -hmm. and then they spend two, three years, and they come back. They also become ambassadors Excellent. and we okay. also welcome expatriates to come and spend time with us. So all of this, I think I would say it's all about yeah. connections, but in a deeper sense than only at the CEO or Absolutely. the CXO levels. And I think I think good uh, good multinational CEOs, uh, it, 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 it makes a lot have, of have uh, uh, difference. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned about um, doing an acquisition in, in, in passing just now. Now, are you seeing this turbulent times as a way, as an opportunity to consolidate the industry, because there are there are there are players across the Correct. spectrum. Correct. I, I think so. <coughs> See, in the, I think uh, we we are about uh, we have now technically close to uh, by next year we'll have technically close to fifty percent of the capacity in the industry. We don't see opportunities for us to. Uh, expand beyond that because it, it would be extremely difficult to yeah. get uh, approvals and things like that. So therefore the last of the big opportunity was one player who had uh, invested, was leveraged heavily and yeah. they were going through a lot yeah. of difficulty. Yeah. So we went and closed it very quickly. And, and, and mind you, that deal was closed in 60 days. Wow. For, uh, it's, a, it's a 100 million euro deal, it's not small, 107 million. It was closed in 60 days and you know how difficult yeah. it is for corporate, for, an for, for India corporate. Uh, to do all of that. Yeah. We did that. We've been, we've been working on it for two years, yeah. but the real deal was done in 60 yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been working on two years internally, talking about it, saying there's a possibility, 
Will they come? Will they not come? We didn't know. But when they came, we were ready. So therefore, I think a uh, key issue there, I, I feel, is that even while we go through some mm. turbulent period, even mm. like now, mm. I think you have this medium and long-term process, even mm. though many people are saying that this medium and long-term process are changing and there's a dynamic world. I still think that for a developing country like us, mm. I think this medium term and long term have to be projected, mm. saying, okay, you go through a turbulent time, you don't want to live only quarter by quarter, yeah. but you say, look, three years from now, we have to make those yeah. investments. And yeah. I think that is another thing which you're working quite hard on the solar space, because mm. we see that as mm. a discontinuity mm. now. Mm. Now, is it profitable? Definitely not. Mm. At this point in time, mm. the solar industry is in some kind of a turbulent phase. Mm. But I think some stability will come in the next three, four years. And those who really are playing now, mm are likely to become the larger player. So therefore, we're really active on that area. And on some of those kind of opportunities, and uh, the typical challenge of an MNC CEO or CXO is always also is, how much do I interface with the ecosystem? How much do I influence the ecosystem versus how much do I basically look at the opportunity as it stands at this point of time? No, absolutely. I think, see, one of the, one of the problems of, I personally feel, and I, I don't have a great experience is, for a very multinational, there is a very rigid code of conduct many multinationals impose, almost like a total silence. So the CEO uh, becomes almost like, uh, you know, it's a very large branch of his operations. Yeah. So, so what happens, it, it's good in many ways because it, it kind of cuts down the risk. But in a country like India where there is a kind of evolving ecosystem right. and evolving political consensus on many issues, and where the, both the central government and the state government and the industry bodies and the ecosystem is still far from formed. I think a CEO of a multinational company must actually venture ahead and say, look, what is the role that I can play? And I think it's important, for instance, the Chamber of Commerce, you know, working in the Chamber of Commerce is very crucial because you can pick your space. Yeah. And, uh, and, it's, and then you don't know where the opportunities are. So yeah. therefore, for us, working very closely with the Chamber of Commerce, yeah as well as working very closely with the regulators are very Correct. crucial. So we, uh, we saw energy as a very important issue. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we started working with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency mm -hmm. uh, before uh, you know, uh, they started working actively on, uh, on this. So you would be surprised. We are knowledge partners to Bureau of Energy Efficiency mm -hmm. for driving training of regulators on energy efficiency wow. it is and we're doing it pro bono it gives us enormous amount of uh, linkages Correct. to a large number of people yeah. or municipal regulators Correct. who have to implement codes and building codes and other things right. and at the same time we're doing it pro bono so it's the kind of a very enlightened uh, you know you know uh, shared value yeah. or uh, public space work that we're doing right. so I, I think that a multinational CEO must be able to explain to the head office that as important as it is for uh, uh, the multinational firm to be run Correct. under Correct. very strong global Correct. guidelines, uh, a, a multinational CEO must move out, mm -hmm. out in the space and involve. And I think that would, that would be often a challenge because yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you are again reporting to a regional boss, it may become very difficult. So therefore, it's it's important to capture that attention and say, look, hey, this is very important. Yeah. This is yeah, an important connected role. Back, connected back to the long term picture, because somewhere this work, which at this point of time may not seem like a one year, two year revenue, right, right. is actually the the, the part of the big story five years, seven years out. And then no, uh, absolutely, because I think India is changing. I think. We are rap rapidly ad ad adopting uh, international norms and regulations and codes and stuff like that. And now, uh, if we don't play an active role in that, these things are going to be decided anyway. Uh, so you will play a role in bringing the best practices yeah. and at the same time understanding the, the direction which the country wants to move. Yeah. See, for instance, we work with the Indian Green Building Congress, mm -hmm. which is a CIA initiative. Uh, on the lead uh, sustainability design and we work actively with founder members. Uh, I don't think we are even founder members in Europe. Mm. So therefore, this is yeah. something which is new because we yeah. invested money but we work with them very closely on capability development. We do the same with the, the uh, 
TERI, which is the Energy Research Institute. We work with them on the sustainable housing, sustainable mm. design, and variety of things. Mm. Now, all of this, the CEOs and the CXOs have to be in the public space. Mm. They have to be in the public space. And I think that is, to me, uh, an important lesson that we have to communicate. One you know, other point I just want to cover is, you, know, you are in a business where, the, on the customer side, the prices will be much more sticky, much more flat. Whereas, on the input side, it's commodities, fluctuations, inflation, and possibly also much more foreign exchange exposure on the in input side as against on the output side. Um, over the last two, three years, any examples of what you have done on operational excellence or risk management? See, one of the, the two things. One is we, we do recognize uh, over a period of time in the commodity business, we've got a, a price premium of 4 to 6%. So therefore, that helps you to be slightly better than others. Then we really, you know, in sometime in 2008, we realized that this cost was going way ahead. So I think over the last uh, four years, we have taken out about 10% of our operating costs, mm -hmm. the manufacturing costs. So the first year was 4.5, the next year was some 2.53. So to, to cumulatively, it shaved off about 10% of costs. So essentially, you at least absorbed uh, some part of the inflation. But I, I think this can only take you up to a point because uh, in this. And that's where this consolidation, mm -hmm. that is yeah. one of the important things that we did to buy this company was logistics efficiency mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we were located in one location, mm -hmm. so therefore we really looked at the logistics efficiency. So therefore, if we really look at the logistics efficiency and the manufacturing mm -hmm. efficiency, and I think we were able to do a much better job. Of. But these can only take anybody up to a point. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you've got to produce advanced products, mm -hmm. and you've got to innovate. Mm -hmm. I think it's in the innovation space mm -hmm. in terms of bringing in advanced products for the green buildings. Uh, bringing in special products for fire safety, mm -hmm. all of that where you, uh, you have such a strong technological and IP protection, mm -hmm. you're able to make a significant amount of margin in those. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's really managing the product mix and segmentation, mm -hmm. which is very, very crucial, mm -hmm. apart from just being you know, operationally excellent, yeah, because so that can only take you <laughs> up to a point. So therefore, you really have to look at new products and new ideas mm -hmm. from this yeah. space. Now the operational excellence is more taking care of the disadvantage that you may land up with. Absolutely, absolutely. But the value addition is the way Absolutely. I, I always say that, uh, look, you can only cut 100% of your cost. Yeah. But your revenues, there is no limit to what you uh, what you expanding your revenue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, assuming theoretically you can cut every cost, you can't yeah. anyway. Yeah. So therefore, I think, uh, in my opinion, CEOs, See, we, we love the certainty because a cost reduction exercise is a certainty. Absolutely. You can go and tell the guys, cut your cost, do this and things like that. But the most important task is how do I expand the revenue? Where yeah. do I see discontinuity where I can uh, get into, get a new business uh, thing? Yeah. So we, we, in fact, in this country, we saw solar control products when, you know, when it was non-existent. It was some 0.5% of this. And today it's 10% of the country and we have about 60% market share there. Mm -hmm. Now we created this market, it's, it's margin rich because it is technology driven and application engineering driven. Now so therefore it's equally vital for CEOs to, to invest a lot that. of time okay. externally. Yeah. So that's where really the ideas are going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much Sundaram. Thank very you. Pleasure um, talking to you. Yeah.